Hello and welcome. This is another video on soundproofing your home recording studio. And today I'm going to be talking all about should you or should you not use green glue? So I am a fan of green glue, but lately I've been thinking a lot more about if it is really necessary for every home studio build. So in this lesson, I want to talk about whether you should or should not use green glue and look at a lot of the science and facts behind this so that you can make an informed decision on whether it's worth the extra money, time and cost. Before I jump in, I want to say that I do have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. This will help you with making sure that you build the right studio the first time and go through the entire process of designing your studio with me in the workshop. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you can check it out at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop workshop. All right, let's jump in to this lesson on do you really need green glue? So the first thing I want to answer is what is green glue? Green glue is technically a damping system. What damping is, is that it is a system that reduces sound coming through your wall by reducing the amount of vibration in the wall. So it absorbs sound and transfers it into heat, thus not transferring as much sound into your room, which is what we all want when soundproofing our recording studio. So there are many damping systems on the market. One of the main ones that a lot of people hear about is mass loaded vinyl. It's a constrained layer damping system. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm not a huge fan of mass loaded vinyl. And in this video, we're going to talk about green glue, which is a different type of damping system. Now, I will say that Roger Weiss, who wrote Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros, does recommend using green glue over other damping systems. That includes mass loaded vinyl and many other things on the market. The reason is that he found that green glue actually does a better job of sound isolating across the frequency spectrum and especially in the lower frequencies, which is usually where we have the most trouble in soundproofing. So now let's look at how green glue actually increases isolation and how it compares to a wall without green glue. So damping increases isolation and has the effect of the equivalent of adding more layers of drywall to your wall. So to be more specific, in the book, Home Recording Studio, Build It Like the Pros, Rod has this great example where he talks about the similarity of adding green glue between two layers of drywall and the that being equivalent to adding four layers of drywall to each side of your wall. So green glue is pretty powerful in the sense that it is the equivalent of adding four layers of drywall. So in his book, he shares this graph that was done by the green glue company when they were testing their product. So a lot of soundproofing products companies will test their product at a third party independent lab. And this is very common throughout the industry. So this lab study is completely separate from the green glue company and has no bias from someone in the company. Now this graph shows you and it compares green glue versus four layers of drywall versus two layers of drywall and one layer of drywall. It's important to note that this is a single wall system, so it's not the double wall system I usually recommend when building a soundproof home recording studio, but it's a good graph for comparing what the green glue is doing. So if we look at this graph here from the home recording studio, build it like the pros book by Roger Weiss, we can see that green glue performs way better than even the four layers of drywall across the entire frequency spectrum up until about 200 hertz. At around that point, it performs about the same as the four layers of drywall, but then you get a slight increase of transmission loss in the lower frequencies around 100 hertz using the green glue. If we look at the two layers per side, which is what you would be most likely doing if you were not going to use green glue, you can see that the transmission loss is worse in the lower frequencies than green glue, and it's worse across the entire frequency spectrum altogether. So after looking at that graph, you may be thinking to yourself, okay, green glue is a no brainer. I definitely want to use this. 
But I have a couple more points I want to make before you jump to that conclusion. First is, how much isolation do you really need? So it's important to think that with a green glue wall like that, you may end up spending more money and time with the green glue and not really get more isolation for your needs. I would say that in a normal home studio where you're recording, let's say vocals, acoustic guitar, maybe some electric guitar, but not at super loud volumes, and just listening back through your monitors at a normal listening volume of say like 85 decibels, then you probably don't need green glue. However, if you are a drummer or you're a band or you're recording loud bands, then you probably need the most isolation you can get. So it's up to you to decide how much isolation you need. Now, the next point is super important and one that I don't see mentioned enough on the internet. And this is that you're only as soundproof as your weakest link. So when you're building your soundproof home recording studio, you wanna think about the weakest links in your system, which are almost always gonna be your door and your windows. The problem is that if you have a soundproof wall, for example, the soundproofing company says that their two layers of drywall with green glue in the middle with a double stud wall will give you an STC rating of 71, which is really impressive in the soundproofing world. However, the highest level soundproof door from a reputable soundproof door supplier named Overly, which is also recommended in Roger Weiss's book, the best soundproof door you can buy that I could find got an STC of 57. This means that if you were to use this technique with the green glue and then put in a door with an STC of 57, you still won't have a match and you will probably get some more sound coming through your door than through your walls, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of having green glue in your walls. The next way to think about this if you're gonna build your own door is to look at the mass of your door since STC ratings must be done in a certified lab. So it's gonna be hard to figure that out if you build your own door. So the next best thing you can do is try to match the mass of your green glue wall with the mass of your door. Again, remember mass is an important part of soundproofing and is one of the main ways that sound is stopped in your soundproof studio. So when we look at a wall with two layers of 5 8 inch drywall with green glue in the middle, remember that is similar to a wall with four layers of drywall on each side. That much mass means that you have 8.8 .8 pounds per square foot on each side of your wall, coming together to a total of 17.6 pounds per square foot for both walls. If you were to build one single door, like a super heavy door, like I did in my studio, that door would have to weigh at least 352 pounds to match the sound isolation that you're getting from your double drywall with green glue. Now, if you were to create a communicating door, which I actually recommend these days more than the single door, then you would want to divide that weight between your two doors. So that would mean that each door would have to weigh a minimum of 176 pounds each still a fairly heavy door and one that you are certainly going to have to make sure that you manufacture to that way you can't just buy one on the market most likely so in conclusion should you buy green glue it's really up to you i think the point of this video for me was to try to make you think a little bit more about these damping systems and how they actually increase your isolation which at first seems like a no-brainer of course we want to increase isolation but when you start to realize how hard it is to increase the isolation of your doors and i didn't even mention windows but also much more costly to increase the weight of your windows then you start to think okay maybe this green glue is not as much as I thought it was gonna be and might not work in my own studio design. So remember, if you are going for maximum isolation with two layers of 5 8 inch drywall or three or four layers of 5 8 inch drywall with green glue, whatever you do, you then have to make sure that your door has the same isolation as your walls. And as you've seen in my example, buying an extremely heavy soundproof door from Overly it could cost you upwards of $5,000, which is prohibitive for most home studio budgets, or you have to build an extremely heavy door, which also is difficult and can cost a lot as well. So all this is to say, think very carefully about your studio design before you jump into spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on green glue and adding it to your drywall. I did it in my studio. I don't really have any regrets, but I do think that my walls are much more soundproof than my door and my door is still the weakest link. So maybe the green glue is not really doing as much as I had hoped. 
All right, I hope you have enjoyed this soundproofing lesson on should you or should you not use green glue. If you are interested in building a soundproof home recording studio right the first time, check out my soundproofing workshop. You can watch it right away for free at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. I look forward to seeing you next week with some more soundproofing advice. Thank you.